I must be honest, I prefer Pali's hair all natural. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, Professor Nozadlova, the Dean of UKZN School of Clinical Medicine, is an internationally renowned dermatologist, and through her global collaborative work with a number of scientists, she identified a new gene that is a major cause of permanent hair loss amongst women of African descent. This is, of course, a major breakthrough in the medical field, seeing that more and more people are suffering from things like alopecia and hair loss. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Love Thank having you. you here again, Thank discussing you. my favorite topic, hair. Yes. What an interesting study. Where did your, your interest in hair come from and, and why did you decide to study this? Mm, well, you know, over the past 10 to 15 years, we've seen an increase in the number of patients presenting with hair problems. Yeah. Uh, if I may quote a study that we did a couple of years ago, um, you know, hair conditions were amongst the top five conditions that we see. However, if you look 20 or 30 years back, hair conditions or hair loss was not even in the top 10 conditions that we see. So surely something has come up that is actually causing a sudden increase in the number of patients or prevalence of hair disorders. And you decided to study ex what that is exactly, and you found out that it was a gene? Yes. So why are women all of a sudden having that gene where they didn't have it years ago? Well, uh, we all have this gene. It's called yeah. PAD3. I won't say the whole name, otherwise you'll bat your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> so we Science. all have this gene, mm -hmm. and this gene is responsible for making the hair shaft. So it, it determines the protein that makes the hair shaft, that is our hair or your hair. Yeah. However, in these women or African women who have the, 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 the problem, the gene is defective. It means it's damaged such that it then uh, results in abnormal hair shaft. Okay, and so we just, all have this hair shaft. We all have this gene. But in black gene. woman, it's it's defective. Yeah, it's why? What has defected it? Well, the, 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 there's a mutation. We call it mutation. Okay. Where for whatever reason, environmental or genetic, the gene just gets damaged or changed, and it doesn't do what it is supposed to do. Because it's supposed to produce the hair shaft that is strong and firm, but yeah. because it's defective or damaged the outcome or the result of the hair that is produced, it's not strong and it's inflamed and it falls off, causing permanent hair loss. If I have to look at a lot of my friends, I thought that they were losing a lot of their hair because of, of weaves and tightening braids too tight. So do you think that perhaps years and years of ladies maybe tightening their hair too much and wearing weaves, that it's kind of gone from generation to destroy that gene? Or sure. what is the point? Like how, how did that how, happen? Yeah, sure, that's an interesting question. In that uh, if you look at the time, and it, it's actually coincidental with <clears throat> the use of weaves yeah. and wigs and hair extensions. So when we looked at, we had 15 families, and we had families from South Africa and the US from North Carolina, collaborated with a colleague of mine, and we found that women who were using weaves and hair extensions mm -hmm. and chemicals, they had a much more severe manifestation of the hair loss. For example, wow. if someone keeps the hair natural and just look after hair that doesn't pull, there's no traction, maybe the hair loss will be the size of your eye. However, if they weave their hair, they put uh, uh, hair extensions, the hair loss will be the size of my palm. And it wow. is permanent because these are environmental factors. The pulling, the chemicals, and the traction yeah. actually damages the hair, and the progression is much faster. Which is why I was saying now women should try and go natural. And if they do braids or if they do uh, uh, plait their hair, it must not be tight. But weaves and external uh, extensions, they are out for me. Really, that it must be such a fascinating study because it goes on to, you know, the whole topic of evolution and seeing how we are evolving as products, I suppose, of our environments. So what do you recommend for people who've already started losing their hair? Do you think that gene can regenerate itself to then start reproducing yeah, I hair? wish it could. Oh, no. <laughs> but Come on, invent something yeah, that'll We, we work on that, yeah. So what we can say is, one of the things that we want to do is to educate hairstylists because yeah. they are the ones who are more likely to pick up these conditions when they're doing their hair so that they know this, is, this needs to be referred or this needs to be ignored. But women need to, you know, tractional alopecia, which is hair loss on the hair margin or in Jibaba, it is something that is preventable. It is, is it preventable? It is so preventable. It's not, so you're not born with alopecia? 
And you aren't, aren't bald, well, maybe with alopecia, but so you're not destined to go bald. Well, Does it happen throughout your life? So, so alopecia is just a dermatological term for hair loss. Okay. And there's numerous causes of hair loss. Okay. So today we're talking about the triple CA, where you lose hair on the, on the, on the crown. Yeah. But there's other types of hair loss that you see probably in men, especially Caucasian and Asians, I the know, common shame. pet in baldness, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that is another type of hair loss. And then we talk about traction alopecia, which you find commonly in African women because of the pulling of the hair. And what's happening now, they're braiding their young kids, like five, seven, 10 yeah. years old, using extensions. And you see now the traction alopecia by the time they're teenagers, whereas in the past you'd see it around middle age. So there's a lot of education uh, in terms of telling our patients that they need to keep their hair natural, look after the hair, yeah. and show that they, they, you know, they don't have these manifestations earlier on. Yeah. Okay, so then what should we do if we want full, thick locks of hair and we don't want any hair loss, so yeah. if we want to prevent it? Do you have any um, old wives' tales as well? Mm. Because I know when I wanted my hair to grow and I wanted to be thick, I started using horse shampoo. Sure. Is that a no-no? No, no. no. <laughs> There's no evidence for that, yeah. Oh All I can say is that particularly, you know, Asians and Caucasians and Africans have got different hair. Yeah. African hair tends to be dry and fragile and it breaks yeah. easily. Whereas Caucasian and Asian hair is much stronger and longer and curly. So for Africans, they, they need to always know that they must use a conditioner when they wash, after washing yeah. their hair. Most of them don't know that because it softens no, the hair. No, I use a treatment and a moisturizer every single time I wash my hair. Moisture, 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 yes, otherwise it yes. just gets so dry. Yeah, because as they mentioned, that there's like seven types yeah. of hair. The lower types of hair are much more fragile and much dry. Yeah. If you look at someone with you know, blue eyes and very light skin, their hair is fine, it's oily. They actually don't want any grease on their hair. Yeah. So you need to know what type of hair you have and whether you need to moisturize it or not. And, but I want to emphasize that the use of a conditioner is very important. Yeah. And you don't have to wash your hair every day. Two sure. times a week is fine, and make sure you moisturize your hair. And the braids and the extensions and the weaves, are, they really do look nice every now and then. So what happens if you only use them every now and then? You're fine, hey, you're not gonna lose all your hair. Actually not. There's a study that was done by L'Oreal, really? which showed that if you use extensions on your hair, the longest time you should have extension on your hair is one month per year. Not any more than that, because oh where you actually put the extension and attach it to your natural hair, it causes a fracture and the hair breaks. Oh my goodness, and then it'll take a year for that to get repaired. Well, to yeah, grow yeah. Hopefully. So those are really, the, 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 and, and the reason why you're seeing so much of hair loss nowadays is because, you know, the weaves, the hair extensions only came in in the last 10 exactly. to 15 years. Exactly. Prior to that, we didn't have problems. Thank you so much for your studies. You're going to be you. keeping us beautiful for centuries on. Thank you. <laughs> I can't, Thank please you. let me know when you've got that magic little pull to repair that gene in our hair. That definitely will do. <laughs> you've really got to look after your hair. It's the only crown you never take off. So join the conversation online and tell us about some of your tips for treating natural hair. Tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the official hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on our Facebook page. After the break, we prepare mouth-watering pico de gallo fish tacos with Chef Aya. And for Fashion Express Thursday, wardrobe stylist Elliot Ndimeni shows us how to style up your wardrobe with just a few key essentials, as well as info on how you can win a shopping spree at Santon City, valued at a whopping, and wait for this, a whopping 100,000 rand. I mean, imagine going to shop with 100,000 rand in your pocket. We're giving that to you today. Thank <laughs> you.